Hi, I'm Prof L and welcome to Chemistry Matters. And today we're going to be talking about your favourite and mine, titrations. Now, I'm sure that many of you watching this have actually done a titration, whether it be at school or first year university. So a titration is basically just the uh, um, addition of one solution to another and some particular reaction that then ensues when that happens. And uh, you keep adding that solution until the reaction has finished. Essentially, there's various ways of figuring out whether your reaction's finished or not. In terms of titrations, the most common type of titrations that are done are acid-base titrations. And that, as the name suggests, is the reaction between an acid and a base. So let's kick off with an example of that. Here's an acid. There's one you all know, HCl, hydrochloric acid. We have a solution of that. Um, and we've got 20.00 mils of that solution. Trouble is, we don't know its concentration. So we're going to titrate this solution and we are going to titrate it against a solution of sodium hydroxide. Now the sodium hydroxide that we've got, we do know its concentration, okay? It is 0 0.150 mole per liter in concentration. And when we do our titration, what we find is that in order to reach what we call the uh, end point of the titration, this required 18.46 milliliters of this solution to react completely with that one. So then the question that we're going to ask, what's the concentration of the HCl? And that is pretty much always the question that you are asking whenever you do a titration. You're trying to find the concentration of an unknown solution. So, where to begin? Well, like any stoichiometry problem, and that is all that this is, it might be a titration, but when we're doing the calculations, it's just a stoichiometry problem. What have we got? What have we been given? What are the pieces of data that we know? We've got here a concentration, we've got here a volume, and here we've got a volume as well. So, obviously if we've got a concentration and a volume, then we can get an amount, can't we? We can get a number of moles because concentration, remember, C equals N over V, and so we know concentration, we know volume, so therefore N is going to be uh, C times V, concentration times volume. We can figure out the number of moles of sodium hydroxide. Okay, so having done that, we can say, right, so that's equal to concentration, which is 0 0.150 mole per litre, multiplied by the volume, 18.46 mils, we want that, remember, in litres, so that's 0 0.01846 litres, and that is going to be equal to uh, 2.77 times 10 to the minus 3 mole. Okay, so that's the number of moles of sodium hydroxide that we're going to be using in this titration. Now, we've forgotten to do one really, really important thing, um, and hopefully you can all guess what it is. The one thing we haven't done is we haven't written our balanced chemical equation, have we? Because this is a stoichiometry problem, you've always got to know what your balanced chemical equation is. So, sodium hydroxide plus HCl, acid plus base, remember, gives salt plus water, so we get H2O plus NaCl. We need that because that shows us our mole ratio. And luckily here, as it is for most acid-base reactions, our mole ratio is one to one, so we don't have to do anything. We know that the number of moles of sodium hydroxide is gonna be the same as the number of moles of HCl. So, having done that first bit, we've got our number of moles of sodium hydroxide, and we know that that is going to be the same number of moles of HCl, but that now is going to be the number of moles of HCl that we've got in 20 mils. 
Remember, our HCL solution had a volume of 20 mils. So having done this, we can then get our concentration of our HCL. C is equal to N over V. Here is your number of moles, 2.77 times 10 to the minus 3 mole. Here is your volume, it's 20.00 mils, which in terms of liters, 0 0.02000 liters. We do that calculation and we end up with a concentration of 0 0.139 mole per liter. Okay, so that is, uh, I guess, a fairly typical type of calculation that you would do for any sort of acid-base titration. Um, because with an acid-base titration, as I said, what you're trying to find is a concentration of an unknown solution. And in order to do that, you'll be given a volume and a concentration of the other solution, and using those particular data, you can then figure out the concentration of your unknown solution. Okay, so there's one example. Let's have a look at another slightly more in-depth example here. And we're going to have a look at aspirin. Uh, and I'm sure you all know about aspirin. You've probably all taken aspirin somewhere in your life. This is what aspirin looks like, just uh, out of interest, I guess, for you guys. So this, uh, the, re the, the chemical name for aspirin is acetyl salicylic acid. And so we have got uh, an OH there. Here is your acid group here. This is a carboxylic acid. And here is your acetyl group over here. So that's the proton that we're going to be titrating. And this reacts with sodium hydroxide. Uh, you lose that proton and it reacts in a one-to-one -one mole ratio with sodium hydroxide. So basically what we are going to say in this problem, we've got a tablet of aspirin that weighs exactly half a gram, 0 0.500 grams. Now, when you go to the pharmacy or wherever and you buy aspirin, what you will find, or what you should know, I guess, is that the tablet that you're taking is not made completely of aspirin because you need other things in the tablet basically to do such things as uh, hold the tablet together in a tablet form, so they're called binders. Uh, you might need buffers in there to keep the pH uh, correct so that uh, the uh, active ingredient can work, all of these sorts of things. So we're going to take our uh, tablet of aspirin, our half gram tablet of aspirin, and we're going to find how much actual aspirin is in there. And the way that we're going to do that is we're going to react it with a solution of sodium hydroxide. So here's our sodium hydroxide. The concentration of our sodium hydroxide is 0 0.150 mole per litre. And the volume that we find when we do the titration of our sodium hydroxide against our aspirin solution is 15.14 millilitres. Okay. The question then becomes, how much aspirin is in our tablet? What's the mass percent of aspirin in our tablet? So how do we do that? This is a little bit different from your typical sort of um, titration type question. But again, you're given very similar data to any data that you would be given in uh, a titration question. You're given a concentration and you're given a volume. And as soon as you're given a concentration and a volume, what can you get? You can get a number of moles. C equals N over V. So therefore N is CV. N in this case is the number of moles of sodium hydroxide that we use in our titration. So that is equal to 0 0.150 mole per litre multiplied by the volume. This is in milliliters. Remember we want it in litres. So that is 0 0.01514 litres. And when we do that calculation, we find the number of moles of aspirin is 2.27 times 10 to the minus 3 mole. So what that's saying is that in order for our sodium hydroxide to react completely with our aspirin, we need 2.27 by 10 to the minus 3 moles of it. 
So where to from here? The question is asking, right, how much aspirin do we have in our tablet? What's the mass percent of aspirin in our tablet? How is that related to the number of moles of sodium hydroxide we use in the titration? Well, we know that aspirin reacts in a one-to-one -one ratio with sodium hydroxide. So therefore, the number of moles of aspirin in our tablet must be the same as the number of moles of sodium hydroxide that we've used. So therefore, the number of moles of aspirin is equal to 2.27 times 10 to the minus 3. So what's that telling us? Okay, that's telling us that we've got this number of moles of aspirin in this mass of tablet. So hopefully you can see where we're going to go with this. Uh, as often happens in stoichiometry problems, we've calculated a number of moles. Once we have a number of moles, we can get a mass, okay? Because we know the chemical formula of aspirin. So we can calculate our mass simply as the number of moles multiplied by the molar mass of aspirin. Here's our number of moles of aspirin, 2.27 times 10 to the minus three mole, multiplied by the molar mass of aspirin, which is 180.154 gram per mole. You had the picture of aspirin up on screen before this. Um, I'll let you show by yourselves that that is in fact the molar mass of aspirin. We multiply these guys together and we get 0 0.409 grams. So what does this answer mean? It means that in that 0.5 gram tablet of aspirin, we only had 0.409 grams of actual aspirin. Okay, the rest of the mass must have been these binders and these um, buffers and, and, and things like that. So the final thing that we were asked to do is calculate the mass percentage of aspirin, okay? So the mass percentage is given by the mass of aspirin, which is 0 0.409 grams, over the mass of the tablet, which was 0 0.500 grams, and we'll multiply that by 100, and if you do that, you then get 81.8%. So the tablet of aspirin that you got from the pharmacy was not, in fact, 100% aspirin, it was 81.8%, and that is gonna be true of any aspirin that you go and buy from any old wear. So, nice little question that, again, a little bit different from your typical sort of acid-based titration thing, but you're using exactly the same principles as you would for any titration, and again, uh, you're using those two stoichiometric equations, and <laughs> with those, you can pretty much solve any stoichiometry problem. So, we'll see you next time.